This is the supercomputer that appears in the backdrop of the Big Clive live channel when I'm doing live streams. For those of you who don't know about that, I do a live stream every week. You can find a link to that down below that channel. You can either watch them live and engage in the chat with them, but they last a long time, but you can drop in and out as need, as you desire. Uh, but you can also, they're archived, so you can just play them in the background if you want a bit of ambient company while you're in your workshop or wherever, <clears throat> or some ambient sound to help you sleep. Um, so this panel has a few red LEDs, and the reason for that is that uh, I've just repaired this panel by putting red LEDs in place of the duff blue ones. And the reason for that is because quite a few of these LEDs failed. It's just there are standard flash LEDs. It's a 5-volt supply, a resistor, and an LED, but it just so happens that they were dumpster deal LEDs from eBay, so quite a few failed. So I've recorded that uh, whole process, and you're about to see that. Um, I'll turn the light off here, in fact, so you can actually see just how pleasing this panel looks. The point of the red LEDs is that uh, some of the viewers of the live stream said, whenever you change one of these LEDs, you should change it for a different colour. That way we'll know which LEDs have failed, and we can see progressively how many fail over the whole panel. So we'll see how that goes. It's going to be quite interesting. But anyway... This video is about the repair, so it's about to get bright again because I'm about to jump straight into the repair itself. Let's begin the repair. So where did the concept of all these blink lights come from? Well, in the past, in the sort of 1970s, computers, now notice I'm doing this with power on, it's 5 volts, it's fine, it's protected by the resistor and series of each LED. What I'm doing is I'm heating both the terminals of the LED at once, and then just pulling it out with a little silicon sleeve. Very, very easy. I'll take all the LEDs out first. So, in the 1970s and 80s, the earliest computers kind of had lots of lights. And the reason they had lots of lights is because they were doing very basic operations at a binary level. And for fault diagnostic purposes, they literally had a lamp or LED or neon in the earliest computers, per bit, so to speak. And it gave the impression, it's, it's this lasting image that computers have hundreds of flashing lights. And I can recall in a su superstore in uh, Glasgow called Lewis's, there was this fake computer. And when you came up the escalators towards it, it was what they call a concession in a in a large sort of shopping mall and they had this supercomputer which was basically just what they call neon relaxation oscillator there's hundreds of them just a wall of blinking orange lights and it looked so computerized and uh it was a handwriting analysis computer in reality it was just a random thing it didn't actually analyze your handwriting you had people dressed as computer scientists in the white lab coats of that era. And you paid your money, they gave you a card, and you signed the back of it. And then they went over to the computer, the computer, and they fed the card into it. And the card would, would be pulled through by a motor. And then there'd be a little, it would have position sensors, and then it would have a little less sort of like seismic sort of pen would actually draw sort of a seismic wave across it which would indicate uh, your luck and wealth and things like that. It was just a common thing at that time. <laughs> Sega also made similar equipment. Uh, the Sega Astro Data. If you look for that on the internet, uh, on YouTube, Sega Astro Data. I shall provide a link to that down below as well. It's a fantastic retro computery type thing that made all the right noises and flashing lights, but was really just providing a sort of known output on punch cards. But uh, that's part of the logic behind this of why I made this. But also, it was inspired by seeing the rather attractive set dressing on a Orlando, a, Dis a Universal Studios ride in Orlando, um, called Fast and Furious. And in that particular ride, they've got a lot of blue LEDs in the set. And it looks fantastic. They they may actually... I thought that they were just using flashing LEDs, but they may actually be using uh, addressable LEDs or a control system 
to create a fairly predictable sequence. Not sure. It does look quite rhythmic when you look at it in the footage. Maybe I'll provide a link to that video as well that shows that. Um, have I, how am I doing here for removing the LEDs? I've removed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've removed seven LEDs. I think that's all the ones that are out so far. But in that uh, set dress, and they've got all these blue LEDs. So I was inspired by that to make this just to uh, see how it looked. And it looks very good, I have to say. Now I'm going to get so desoldering braid here. And I'm going to remove the residual solder from where I've done that. Now, desoldering braid is just a wick, a copper wick with flux in it. And when you put it on the solder and you heat it up, it, uh, oh, I upset the supercomputer there. I shorted things out. Maybe I will unplug it then at the moment. Uh, but it wicks up the solder. As it melts, it actually flows into the wick. And it's just a very good way of removing the solder from surfaces. I'm trying to remember where I've uh, removed LEDs. There's a couple. You'll see this used quite commonly in surface mount stuff. It's a great way of getting very, very clean pads. It takes up every trace of solder. So I shall try and move these on where things can be seen. So there's another couple that I need to remove the solder from. And then I'll put the red LEDs in. And having made this, it just ended up as the backdrop to the Big Clive Live channel. Now, if you've not come across the Big Clive Live channel, it's basically a live stream channel that just has ambient technical chat at the weekend. Technical and, well, just anything, including smut, unfortunately. But that's just how it goes. And it's the sort of channel that... Uh, if you just are looking for company at the weekend, just clock in and uh, enjoy the ambient chat. I'm going to put these LEDs in now. I'm just trying to remember the polarity I've got here. Long lead is the anode. Cathode denotes the flat. Okay, that should do fine. Let's uh, put one in and solder it. But... Uh, the streams go on for about three hours or more, sometimes four hours, sometimes longer. But you don't have to hang around for the whole stream. It is just a like almost like just dropping at the pub and there's other people in the pub. That's more or less the, the vibes to it. And it has been very consistent. It's been every Saturday. I didn't realise how long it was going to go on for. Let's say I plug this in again and see if that red LED is redding and LEDing. The red LED is now flash on and off. It doesn't look as bright as others, but that's just purely because, well, red, the red LEDs don't look as bright as others because the blue is quite a sensitive LED. Okay. But yeah, it's quite fun. It's been quite enjoyable. Um, the other reason, the reason it's a, a different channel as opposed to actually doing the live streams on bigclive.com is because my appearance is not perhaps as my voice sounds. A lot of people have this impression that I'm some lovely, bald old man for some reason. I'm not. I look like a thug. I look like somebody who has escaped from, escaped from jail. And that sometimes upsets some people. So that's why it's kept as a separate channel to distance, uh, to try and save people from the horrors of reality. There's this thing that if you listen to radio when you're young and you never ever saw the presenter, you build up this image of what they look like. Ave, for instance, on the internet. I'm not sure what Ave looks like. I've never seen Ave. But Arduino versus Evil. But... Uh, you build up this image of what you expect them to look like, and then when you usually see the person, they look nothing like you were expecting. It's just how it is. Radio was very good at uh, creating an image. You're basically, your brain did all the work. It created the sort of, if you were listening to a drama, uh, your brain painted the image and all... All they were doing was creating, doing voiceover actors sitting in a studio with sound effects. 
though this LED is going to be quite hard to solder because I'm going to have to, it's far in. They'd have all the sound effects and the actors and basically speaking, because they created a realistic scenario, you tended to paint the rest of the image yourself and sometimes the image you paint is nothing like reality. I can remember seeing uh, radio presenters the first time on television and it was always a shock to see what they actually looked like. Nothing like you were expecting. Almost there. Almost done with the repair to the supercomputer. I love those old vintage uh, neon fake supercomputers. It was an era that... Uh, Computers were like the latest thing and they were so exciting and they could do so much. So the idea of one actually predicting your future turned out to be quite a lucrative earner for the people who ran that business. I can recall the fortune telling machines in amusement arcades that claimed to be the computer and they had all the blinking lights and when you uh, put your money in it would think for a while it would scan that is not lighting is that a duff led or have i just not sorted that correctly or have i put it in the wrong way around no i've put it in the right way around i think that's a duff led this supplier has been very very disappointing very disappointing indeed but uh, I can recall one machine in particular, if, for those of you who remember dot matrix printers, they set, they made a very loud buzzy noise when they operated. And uh, I can remember watching a, a, one of these machines working and it jammed the card with the fortune that actually didn't come out the machine. And the guy opened it up and when he opened it up you could see that inside it was not a computer, it was actually the card was already printed in the bottom that was facing down the way and it went into this uh, motorised mechanism that just sort of nudged it through while it was making loud buzzing printing noises but in reality it was just a buzzer that was making the buzzing noises There's also this image that uh, of course the uh... Oh I'm just thinking I could be nuking these LEDs by having the power on because it's through a I shall elaborate on that in a moment yeah, the, the computers and the sci-fi sets were just blinky lights. That was just a classic image of computers. What I'm thinking about here is that uh, I'm using a switch home power supply that's uh, not earthed. So that means that sometimes you get a voltage with reference to ground. And because the soldering iron is actually referenced to ground, it could actually be upsetting some of these LEDs. I doubt it, though. Do I have any more LEDs put in? I've got one more LED put over here and one over here and that will theoretically be me up to date with LEDs. So let's pop this one in here. But if you've not uh, tried the Big Clive Live channel, then you might like it. The streams are long. You don't have to, as I say, hang around for the whole things. But uh, another thing you can do, the ones that are pre that are already recorded, because they're archived and you can actually view them later on. If you're driving somewhere or you just want to relax at night, you can, or you're in your workshop, you can just put them on the background. They make they're like the equivalent of a podcast in a way, with a more natural live feel, and they're just very relaxing to have in the background. It's it's. Quite good to, to have workshop channels on the background while you're in your workshop. Like I sometimes have South Main Auto in the background, listening to Eric O cursing and like crashing about with the engines while he's fixing them. And it just makes a nice ambience. It's almost like having another workshop just through, another, through the doorway, so to speak. That is it. The Civic Computer is now repaired with these random red LEDs. I don't know how that's going to look. We shall find out in the next live stream. <clears throat> so the live streams are advertised in advance on the Big Clive Live channel. They are, um, typically they start at the same time, which is 9 p.m., just after 9 p.m. here in the UK. But that translates to the middle of the night in some parts of the world, unfortunately. And uh, it can be like early morning in other parts. It's the fact that the internet is global. Whenever I live stream, it's going to be some random time of day. 
But, uh, yeah, if you've not seen them before, by all means, uh, take a look down below. You'll see the link and take a look at some of the previous live streams and see if they interest you. But in the meantime, the civic computer is now more or less fixed and ready to go back into action. So I shall go and put it back up in its normal place and it shall resume supercomputing. <laughs>